Hello everyone. Today we're going to be discussing the time value of money. This is an important concept to understand, whether you're in a finance course right now or you use money to do things like buy food and pay your bills. So first we'll look at what time value is and why it's so important to understand. Next, we'll look at how we can calculate it. First by solving for the future value of a single sum you invest today, and then by calculating the present value of a single sum you receive in the future by applying the same logic. And lastly, we'll look at how easy it is to do all of this in Excel. So what is time value of money? First, answer this question for me. If you could choose between me giving you $100 today and $100 one year from now, which would you pick? Probably now, right? Well, there are a few reasons for that. First, if you had the money today, you could invest it in, say, an asparagus farm that's going to make you lots of money. Or start your own asparagus farm that's going to make lots of money. Even just having that money sit in a bank account is going to earn you some interest. Or you could buy a dog that's going to bring you lots of happiness this year. The point is, if you wait a year to receive that money, you're going to miss out on all the opportunities to benefit from spending it on things this year. Essentially, there's an opportunity cost to letting that money sit idle instead of using it on other projects. So when you factor in that opportunity cost, you're going to want to be compensated for all the potential profits or enjoyment that you're missing out on. This is called the time value of money. But there are two other reasons why you might want the money today rather than later. First, you don't even know me, and by this time next year, I could have changed my name and made off to Mexico. But even in a real investment, there's always a risk that the market's going to crash or the company's going to go out of business and you'll lose all or part of your investment. So when we factor in that risk, $100 today and $100 in a year certainly aren't worth the same amount. Let's say that there's a 10% chance that I don't pay you back. Your expected value is $100 times 90% or $90, which is less than if the investment was a sure thing at $100. But even if the expected values were the same, most people will prefer a less risky investment and require an additional return on risky investments. And lastly, even if I could guarantee that I'll pay you back, a little something called inflation is going to mean that $100 in a year is worth less in real terms than $100 today. A typical inflation rate is around 2%, so prices are rising around 2% each year. This means that if today's $100 buys you 100 loaves of bread, in one year, you might only be able to buy 98. And I don't know about you, but I prefer the option with more bread. We just learned that risk, inflation, and opportunity cost contribute to the return you'll require on an investment. So we should factor these in when we're making financial decisions. We can do this by discounting our future cash flows to their value in today's dollars. This way, we can compare apples to apples, today's dollars with today's dollars, in order to make a decision that maximizes our value in today's terms. So how do we discount our future cash flows? Well, it depends on a few key factors. First, we need to know our interest rate, which is the amount that we earn expressed as a percentage of our investment over a given time period. This rate factors in our risk, inflation, and opportunity cost. You'll also hear it referred to as cost of capital, discount rate, or required rate of return. So how far away is the future? We express time in intervals known as periods, and can refer to our total number of periods as n. A period can be any length of time, like a month, a quarter, or a year. So for example, if interest is compounded every quarter, then one quarter is one period. So if the annual interest rate is 12%, then our interest rate for the period is 3%. Compounding just means that whatever interest you earn is added to your investment for next period. So you're earning interest on your initial amount, plus any interest that you've earned in the past. The more interest is compounded, the faster your investment grows. For this video, we'll assume that interest is compounded annually. Let's apply these concepts to a simple example. Suppose I've invested $2,000 in my uncle's acapella group for five years. They'll pay me 8% interest annually to compensate me for my risk, for inflation, and for my inability to use the funds for other things like buying avocados. So after one year, my investment is worth what it was worth before, plus the 8% I earn, or $2,000 times 1 plus $2,000 times 0 0.08. We can express this as 2,000 times 1 plus 0 0.08. This is $2,160.
Then next year, I earn 8% on 2160 as it's compounded annually, which is $2,332. Then next year, I can multiply last year's value by 1.08 to get the new value of my investment. We can calculate the value of the $2,000 after five years as 2,000 times 1.08 times 1.08 times 1.08 times 1.08 times, you guessed it, 1.08 also known as 2,000 times 1.08 to the power of 5. Thus, in 5 years, the money will be worth our initial amount, 2,000, times 1 plus the interest rate to the power of n, the number of periods. This gives us the formula to calculate the future value of an investment. Expressing amounts of money, also known as cash flows, in terms of future dollars is called compounding. What if we already know how much our investment will be worth in the future? Suppose a man in a turtleneck tells you that if you buy a share in his tech company, it'll be worth $500 in three years. But we know that $500 in three years is worth less than if you had it today due to the time value of money. So you probably wouldn't want to pay $500 for it today. How much is it actually worth in today's dollars? We can work backwards from the formula we just created to solve for the present value. This technique is called discounting. Let's say the next best use of our money is to invest it in a music company that pays 5% per year. Thus, the present value of the $500 we get from the share is whatever we would have to invest now to earn $500 at 5% interest, which we'll use as our cost of capital. Rather than multiplying 500 by 1.05 like we would to get future value, we go backwards to get the past value by dividing by 1.05 for each year. This tells us what times 1.05 to the 3 will give us a future value of $500. In this way, we can arrange our future value formula to solve for present value. Thus, the present value of the share is $431.92. We can manipulate this formula to solve for T or R the same way we solved for our future value using the rules of algebra. Solving for R tells us the return on our investment. Solving for n tells us how many periods it will take to earn this return. Lastly, I'm going to go over how to quickly solve for present value and future value using Excel. Let's use the PV and FV formulas to check our answers from the previous questions. Let's type equals FV into any cell. This stands for future value. So first it asks us for our interest rate, which is 8%, followed by the number of compounding periods, which is five for the five years that you're investing in the acapella group. Payment refers to a fixed payment we receive at the end of every period. We'll see examples of this in later videos when we talk about annuities and perpetuities. Here, we aren't paid anything until the very end, so we'll put zero. Lastly, we have the present value, or the value of our money today, which here is the $2,000 that we're investing in the acapella group. There we go. Notice that we get the same answer we did solving it by hand. Next, let's try equals PV for present value. We'll input 0 0.05 for our interest rate, 3 for the number of periods, 0 for the payment, and 500 for future value. We get the same answer as before. Either of these methods will allow you to calculate the present or future value. Excel has formulas to solve for your number of periods or your discount rate as well. Just type equals N P E R or equals rate and plug in the information you know to solve for the missing variable. So today we went over how risk, inflation, and opportunity cost mean that $100 you receive one year from now is worth less than $100 you receive today. Then we looked at how to solve for the present or future value of an investment, first by hand and then using an Excel formula. And lastly, we looked at how to apply the same formula to solving for the number of periods or interest rate of an investment. Now, go try this at home. Thank you.